What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be going over the HCSR04 ultrasonic rangefinder and how to set it up with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, there's a couple things that you're going to need, um, namely first thing you need some resistors. So you're going to need a 1 kilo ohm resistor and 2 kilo ohm resistor and then you're going to need some sort of breadboard. Right now I have a half size breadboard right here. Um, a stock Raspberry Pi, any flavor will do, Pi Zero, Pi Three. Um, an HCSR04 ultrasonic rangefinder um, sensor. And then another optional piece that you might want to get is a, a mount for the sensor. Um, I have one right here. I'll leave a link in the description for all these parts. And I, I'll leave a link for the, uh, the mount too. This one's sort of brittle. I found a more robust one online. And I'll put that down in the link. You're going to need a bunch of jumper cables. I've sort of run out of um, female to male, so I've sort of adapted them here. It's not the best practice, but it should do for this tutorial. And I also have these sort of U-shaped jumper cables, which just make the breadboard implementation a little bit cleaner. These are sort of optional. As long as you have enough jumper cables, you should be good to go. And with that said, let's get started. Let's wire this bad boy up. So the first thing I'm going to do is take four of these jumper cables. And then just wire them to the, the rear of the sensor here. Pretty straightforward stuff. All right, now that that's done, um, we're gonna take the opposite end and just plug them into an area of the breadboard. So I'm gonna pick somewhere here, like in the middle, and just make sure the order is the same as how you plug it on it in on the other end. So we got the blue, blue, green. So if you wanted to, you could actually plug the sensor directly into the breadboard. I've just done it in, in this fashion to give us more flexibility so we can move it around and place the sensor. Um, so now that that's done, we're going to need to uh, essentially wire up the, the power rails. So we're going to need two more, one for the five volt power delivery and then one for ground. So naturally, um, five volt plugs into the five volt pin on the Pi and then ground goes to ground. So that's the third on the top rail and we're good there. I'm just gonna put this here to kind of keep it neat. Um, okay, so now that that's done, we're gonna open this U-shaped jumper pack and pull out some jumpers real quick. So we're just gonna bridge um, power to the five volt to five volt to VCC, I believe. One second to double check. Measure twice, cut once, you know what they say, right? So, okay, so yeah, so there's blue here, 
going to be bridge to So a quick review on how breadboard works if you're not familiar. So um, these power rails just go horizontal and distributing power and then these sort of pins are vertical. So in this manner we've sort of hooked it up so 5 volt travels down here and then bridges the gap and then goes down the blue wire. So now that that's done, we got VCC hooked up, we're going to go ahead and hook up Um, hook up trig oh, it looks like I actually did this incorrectly So now this green wire, which is the trig pin, this goes to GPIO 23, so 23 is the eighth pin on the top row. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just gonna count that again real quick. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that looks right. So that's the eighth pin. And then this is the point where it gets a bit complicated. We're actually gonna need to bridge the echo pin across, and this is where the resistors come in. So go ahead and have a U-shaped jumper cable right here, and it's gonna plug into this yellow output and then go across here, like so. And now we're going to need our resistors. So taking our 1K resistor, go ahead and strip the paper off on the ends and sort of just bend it into a U-shape. Um, try to keep them both sides as uniform as possible. Just to make it neat and essentially we're just going to go from this left side end and then pick one of the unused metal pins so there's the 1k um, now that that's done we're going to go and take our 2k resistor strip the pieces of paper off bend the u-shape real quick This will go directly from the end of the last 1K resistor to um, the ground. Check that, see they're lined up, yep. The ground. And then finally, our last thing we need to do for echo is in between the two resistors on the vertical rail, just pick any pin and plug it in there. And then this goes to GPIO number 18. And 18 is, huh. Eighteen 
fourteen is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, no, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Away from ground, it's like one, two, three. It's three from the ground pin on the top rail, so we just count that. So one, two, three. Yeah, and that makes sense. So it's 18 ground and then 23. So this looks good. So all that's left is the the ground pin for the sensor, and that's pretty self-explanatory. We're just going to get um, any sort of jumper cable we see here. We just pick one that's appropriate length. And then this just bridges orange to ground. So I have this yellow pin here. Hopefully it reaches. If not, it might be a longer one. That should do it so now we have all everything hooked up so now that we verified everything looks good let's go ahead and mount this sensor so I'm just gonna take my bracket here and just sort of attach that to this sensor um, I'm not gonna screw it in because this is temporary so I'm just gonna use some electrical tape to hold each end in place. So that should be good. And that side. And then on the corresponding side. And yeah, there you go. So now it should hold up pretty well. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let me just tape this down real quick and then we can head over to the, to Sublime and mess with the code. Sort of move that. Make sure this is in frame. Um, move that here. Tape it down so it's flush. And then also we need something that it can bounce off of, preferably a square or flat surface. I happen to have this cardboard box here. This should work pretty well. Just mount it right in front. And yeah, let's head over to my computer and, and uh, work out the Python script. So looking at the code here in Sublime, um, I'm going to walk through it real quick. So essentially, it's pretty straightforward. We import the necessary libraries, set up a GPIO and time. And then this set warnings false piece just suppresses the warnings you may get when we exit ungracefully from the script because essentially um, we're going to be running it in a loop. So this function here, ping, is what um, we will use to essentially get the distance reading. So here we set the, you know, set the mode to, to board the numbering scheme. So we set pin trig 23, or I'm sorry, we set trig to pin 23 and echo to 18 like we set up on the breadboard there and then this sets up the pins uh, and then I think believe here it's where it starts the the process of getting the distance measurement so it outputs um, to 
to 23, it sleeps for a second, and then it outputs again, um, sleeps for a really short amount of time, and then I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. I'm pretty, pretty sure it's it's sending a pulse out and measuring the, the, the time it takes to get back, and then based on that, it calculates the, the distance. So that's what's going on this part of the function and then it just returns the distance and then it resets and then it goes back so pretty much what we're doing here is we have an infinite loop and it's just calling this ping function and it's running the rounds um, so let's go ahead and test it out see if it works okay now that we're in the terminal of the Raspberry Pi let's go ahead and run the script so just ls and then python range finder dot py and then run that so now it's reading the distance and it's just looping through and giving us the the measurement so as we can see here it's reading 10.3 centimeters roughly so if we move this box we should see it change so there we go it's it's 20 now it's fluctuating, um, you know, 0 0.02 centimeters. There's a number of reasons for that. Um, there could be interference. The sensor, you know, is just, you just have a bad one. It's inaccurate. Um, as for optimizing it in the code, I'm not really sure about how to go about that. Um, but yeah, so the reading. Is pretty decent. Yeah, you know, as we get closer and closer. So yeah, let's go ahead and measure the accuracy. So I'm gonna line it up right here, and it is giving us a reading of twelve point seven centimeters. So I'm gonna pull out my handy ruler here and go ahead and measure that. So from the tip, it's looking at 12 and a half, give or take, which is not too bad. Yeah, almost 13, I would say. So yeah, it's fairly accurate. So let's move it out some. Sort of offset this so I can get a more accurate reading. So now we're getting 20, 20.5. So now if we start here, yep, it's almost dead on. So yeah, it is actually pretty accurate. I would say um, this is pretty good for a use case where, you know, your object that you're trying to detect is, you know, at the most a couple feet in front of you. Um, for those across the pond, I would say anything within a meter and you should be getting uh, decent reading so yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much it um, use cases so you could use this for you know your robotics projects to implement a crude obstacle avoidance system or if you needed to measure depth of something for example if you had like a container with uh, I don't know grain in it you could detect how fast it's depleting or whatnot or liquid so yeah um, Thanks for watching guys, um, hope you like content on the channel, leave a like, subscribe, and stay tuned. I got some really cool projects coming up, and yeah, peace.